Graphing the linear equation by plotting its intercepts. So the first thing we need to recognize is that the y-intercept is when the x is 0, what is the y value, and the x-intercept is when the y is 0, what is the x value. And so we can do that just really quickly by plugging in 0, and what we get is 2y equals 4, so y equals 2. So just like that, we have a y-intercept. We can plot, plug in 0 the other way, and we get negative x equals 4, so negative 4. And then plotting those would just allow us to put these on our x and y axis, and you can make a line just by connecting the dots. Find the x and y-intercept of this equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in to find the x-intercept. We're going to plug in 0 for the y. And to find the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for the x. And when I do that, I get 6x equals 30, or x equals 5. Or I get negative 5y equals 30, or y equals negative 6. Graph this equation by plotting points. Now, I could make a big table, okay? I could do that. But what I want to show instead is I want to solve this for y because I want to show you what I'm seeing. If I solve this for y by getting the y by itself, I get 28 equals 4y. I just added 4y to both sides. Divide by 4, and I get 7 equals y. So if I were to make a table and plot a bunch of points, I don't need to plot a bunch. I only need to plot a couple. I need an x and a y. So I, I know my y. My y is 7. My y is 7 when I plug in what for x? Well, actually, my y is always 7. This is a constant function because the y is always 7. In fact, there's nothing, no place to plug in the x. I could plug in a 1, but there'd be no place to put it. Okay, so this is going to be that horizontal line at y equals 7. Graph the following function. This function is kind of funny to look at because it's not a y equals, it's an x equals. So this is actually going to be a function where every point on that line is at x equals 6. Okay, so all of my points on my line have the same x value. This is a vertical line at x equals 6. All vertical lines are going to be x equals, and all horizontal lines are going to be y equals. Find the slope. Now, the slope is the change of y over change of x. In other words, we're going to say delta y over delta x is our slope. And so we're just going to say, how much did the y change from negative 10 to 9? It went up 19, okay? So the change was up 19. And from 2 to negative 3, how much did the x change? It went down 5. We're going to simplify that a little bit. I'm just going to put negative 19 over 5 because it doesn't simplify much. And that's my slope. Find the slope of the line if it exists. Now, does the slope of the line exist? Well, first off, how steep would you say that line is? If you tried to ski uh, down that slope, would it be a 0, as in very, very easy, or would it be a 10, as in really, really steep? Or, in this case, it would be an infinity. This slope does not exist. Okay, I'm going to put D and E, stands for does not exist. The reason is because this is a vertical line. So we have x equals 5. Find the slope of the line if it exists, okay? So imagine you're going skiing, and I said, look at this hill we're going to ski down. It's very difficult, and then I'm going to say, it's a 10 on 10 out of difficulty. And you'd say, no, it's not. This isn't very steep at all. The slope of this one is 0, because this is just a flat line at y equals 2. Find the slope in the y-intercept. I can do that by putting it in y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 4x from both sides. And I get y equals negative 4x minus b well, minus 8. And the y-intercept tells me there's my slope. And right there is my intercept. Use the slope intercept form to graph the equation. Now, we've got in slope intercept form already. We have two things. We've got the y-intercept. So I could go on my y-axis and go to 1 and go ahead and put a point right there. That's where it crossed the y-axis. I know that. But I'm also going to move according to my slope. My slope says go down, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it says go over 3, 1, 2, 3. 
So I've got a second point right there. Notice that I moved according to my slope from my y-axis. So I moved down four. I didn't start at the middle. I actually started at my y-intercept. Use the slope-intercept form to graph the equation. It's not in slope-intercept form, so the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 2x from both sides. And I get y equals negative 2x plus 1. My slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is 1. So I'm going to start by graphing my y-intercept. I'm going to go to 1. And then I'm going to move according to my slope. It says go down 2. 1, 2. And then I can't just put a point there. I need to move over. So if we don't have a denominator that tells us rise over run. We just move over one. So I'm going to put my second point right there, and then I'm going to connect my dots. Write the equation of the line, which is a slope of six and passes through four, two. Okay, so there is a, an equation for this, but I have a hard time memorizing a bunch of formulas. So I'm just going to use y equals mx plus b. And I don't know b because that is not b that's actually x and y so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna plug in the three numbers i have for three of the letters so the y is two the slope is six and the x is four i don't know the b so i'm going to leave the b as a b so now my goal is to solve this equation to figure out what is the b so i'm going to multiply six and four and i get 24 and i'm subtracted from both sides and i get negative 22 equals b now I know that no B, I also know my slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it as Y equals six X minus 22. Right, the equation passes through these two points. It could just give me two points. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my slope. My slope is my change in Y over my change in X. So how much do the, does the Y increase? The Y goes up one. And how much does my x increase? It goes up 2. So I'm going to simplify that just a little bit and say my slope is 1 half. Now I know my slope and I know a couple points, but what I don't know is my y-intercept. So I'm going to use my y equals mx plus b formula, which is my slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to plug in three things. I don't know the b, so I'm going to plug in b for b. But everything else, I'm going to use one of my two points. I could have used 3, 4, but I'm going to use 1, 3. Why not? So the y I'm going to use is the 3. The slope I have is 1 half. And the x I have is 1. Okay. Now I'm just going to solve that to find b. And so if I multiply 1 half by 1 and then I subtract from both sides, I get 2.5 equals b. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite my equation as y equals 1 half x plus 2.5. Five, not two fifths. I gotta watch myself here. Two point five. Find the slope of a line parallel and perpendicular. So there's two actual answers to this one. First off, this line. If I wanted to say the same line again, I'd just write the same thing. I'd write y equals one ninth x. It has the same slope, and the slope intercept might be minus four. But instead, I'm just gonna write minus seven. So it's got the same slope. That means parallel. Next thing I'm going to do is do one that's perpendicular. So I do y equals, and instead of doing the same slope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the slope upside down. So I'm going to make it 9 over 1 and make it negative. Now I'm going to simplify that a little bit because 9 over 1 is just 9. So we have negative 9x. So I've changed my slope, and I just need to make sure I don't accidentally pick the same line. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I don't accidentally pick the same line. So I'm going to put What's a number that's definitely not four? How about 100, okay? And so that would be a perpendicular line. Determine whether these three ordered pairs are solutions to this equation. Well, this system of equations. So it needs to work for both of them. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna see which ones work for equation one. Two, eight, if I do two minus eight, I don't get that doesn't work in my first equation because it's supposed to equal negative four and it gets negative six. Okay, so that one's out. I don't even need to check it in the second equation. The second one, I'm gonna plug in negative two, negative two. If I plug in negative two minus two, 
it equals negative 4. It says it's supposed to equal negative 4. So guess what? It works in the first equation. So the next question I have is, does negative 2, negative 2 work in the second equation? So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x and positive 2 for y. And let's see what we get. We get negative 2, which is the same. So this one actually works for both of them. Great. What if we flip it around and we do the same thing, except let's go back and we're going to check in the first one, 2 minus 2. Does that equal negative 4? 2 minus negative 2 equals positive 4. So that doesn't work in our first equation. So the only one that works is B. Solve the system of equations by graphing. I love graphing as my solving. Now, I might do a couple things to graph this, but I'm really just going to graph it in a graphing calculator. But let's say I don't have a fancy graphing calculator and I just have a handheld graphing calculator. Okay. Or let's say I wanted to graph it by hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to solve it for y. So I'm going to solve each of them for y. The first one, if I add y to both sides, I get y equals x plus 6. And that's done. The next one, if I get y by itself, I get y equals negative x plus 2. Okay, so those two don't have the same slope. They have different slopes, so they definitely intersect. And so if we're going to solve it by graphing, what we do is we go ahead and graph each of them. And then we find the point of intersection. So I'm going to go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then have a slope of 1. The second one says we go up 2, and we have a negative slope of 1. And so we intersect here. Now, if I was doing this on graph paper or using graph calculator, I'd get the right answer. But since I don't have a graphing calculator, one thing we can do is we can just set these two equal each other. They both equal the same y. So we just need to figure out what the x would be that would match. So that would be x plus 6 equals negative x plus 2. I'm going to add x to both sides, and now it's 2x subtract 6 equals negative 4, so x equals negative 2. That's only one part of my solution because that's my x coordinate, but the question becomes what is my y coordinate? If I plug in negative 2, if I plug in negative 2, what would the y have to be? Now I can go back into either one of my equations, and what you're going to see is that the y if I plug in negative 2, it has to be positive 4. So my solution is the point of intersection, negative 2, comma, 4. So I solved it by graphing, but then I really solved it by substitution. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Let me know.